In this video, I'm going to look at percentage error or percentage uncertainty. So in chemistry, we use a lot of different apparatus to measure quantities of substances. And so I've got some examples on the board here. I've got a 250 ml volumetric flask. I've got a 25 ml pipette. I've got a 50 ml measuring cylinder. And I've got a two decimal place electronic balance, which as you can see has got my biro on it. So if we just take the 250 ml volumetric flask, for example, so when we fill this up with solution and we get the meniscus exactly on the line, then we would say that we have 250 millilitres of solution in that flask. You can see, if I bring this closer to the camera, there's a plus or minus 0 0.15 marked on there. So what that's saying is that when the meniscus is exactly on the line, there's a, a slight uncertainty as to how much liquid is actually in there. So because of this plus minus 0 0.15, there could be 0 0.15 over the 250. So in other words, you'd have 250. 1.5 millilitres of solution in there or it could be 0.15 below so you'd have 249.85 millilitres in there. So I've had a quick look at the other two pieces of apparatus here and found out that the pipette is saying plus or minus 0 0.03 millilitres and the measurement cylinder plus or minus 1.0 millilitres. So these three pieces of apparatus have actually got the uncertainty marked on to the equipment. The balance on the other hand doesn't. So there's a sort of general rule of thumb to accommodate that. So you can see this 2dp balance is obviously reading to the nearest 0 0.01 of a gram, hundredth of a gram. So the general rule of thumb is we would take half of the smallest division and make that the uncertainty. So the smallest thing this can measure is 0 0.01. So we half that, so we'd get 0 0.005 grams. You can see I've just written that up there. So half the smallest division if it's not marked on the actual piece of apparatus. So if we look at the way we calculate the percentage error or the percentage uncertainty now, you can see I've written up a formula. Hopefully you can see it okay. So percentage error or percentage uncertainty is equal to the uncertainty or the maximum error could be reported as either divided by the amount that you measure with the equipment multiplied by 100. So a quick task for you to try. Let's calculate the percentage error or the percentage uncertainty in these four pieces of apparatus as we have them at the moment. So we've got 250 millilitres of solution measured in the volumetric flask, 25 millilitres of solution measured by this pipette, and let's say we use the measuring cylinder to to measure out 50 millilitres and hopefully if this doesn't flicker too much it's pretty still at the moment 4.39 grams on the balance so if you want to pause the video now and have a go at working out the percentage uncertainty in all four of those readings so you can see my answers now we've got 0.06% for the flask, 0.12% for the pipette, 2% for the measuring cylinder, and 0.11% for the balance. So we'll just pick one of them. All I did, say for this one, so we do the uncertainty or the error divided by the amount measured. This measures a, a fixed volume of 250 multiplied by 100. So in all of those four examples, I was actually just taking single measurements with the apparatus. So what about if you have multiple 
measurements. So there's three examples on the board there. If you're measuring a titra in a titration, you have an initial burette reading and a final burette reading, and the titra is the difference between those two readings. So essentially, you are doubling the error because you're using the burette twice to, to do the measuring. Temperature changes in reactions. Again, you have an initial temperature and a final temperature. And again, you've got two readings, both with errors associated. And the same with mass changes in chemical reactions. So you measure, say, for example, the mass of a crucible at the start, heat it up, measure the mass again. What's the change in mass? Again, you've got two mass readings to get the change. So because all of these involve two readings, we simply double the error. So to check you've got that, we'll just have a look at this question here. You can have a go, and then I'll go through the answer. Burette has a maximum error of plus or minus 0.05 cm cubed in each reading. Calculate the percentage uncertainty in a titra of 23.65 cm cubed. And there's my answer. So I've just put the numbers into this formula here. The, there's the maximum uncertainty in the burette. I've doubled it because the titra has been arrived at from two measurements. So the uncertainty divided by the amount measured multiplied by 100 gives me 0.42% error. So we'll finish off the video by looking at a couple of ways in which we can reduce the error. So the obvious thing to do is to use more accurate equipment. So for example, that 2 DP balance I was using at the, in the video, if I could afford to, I would use a 3 DP balance, but we can't stretch to that, so we were stuck with the 2 DP balance. So how else can you um, reduce your error? Well, the other way is actually to use larger quantities of chemicals in your experiments. So I'll just do a quick worked example of how that works and then that'll be it. So I'll just use this measuring cylinder to make this point. So it's the one I showed at the start. It's got the plus or minus one milliliter um, uncertainty. And let's say we're gonna use it to measure out 30 milliliters of uh, acid, for example. So plugging those numbers into the formula, we get an error or a percentage error of 3.33%. And you can see in green, I've simply increased the volume to 50 milliliters. And when you put the numbers into the same formula, the error drops to 2%. So you can see that if you scale up your experiment, you use larger quantities you actually reduce your errors. So if your money's no object, you can use more accurate equipment. If not, use larger quantities.